It's time for Global Insights, where we speak to experts from around the world on issues making headlines. Seoul and Washington fired eight missiles from South Korea on Monday, demonstrating the Allies' deterrence and capability against threats from North Korea. And this show of force followed North Korea's firing of eight missiles the day before, wherein, when it launched short-range ballistic missiles and new tactical guided weapons from four different locations. President Yoon Seo-go said that he would respond firmly and sternly to nuclear and missile threats from the North, which he said were advancing by the day. And the South and the US believe that the North will soon hold a nuclear test, which would be its seventh since 2006 and the first of its kind since September 2017, when it claimed to have successfully tested a thermonuclear bomb to fit on its ICBMs. We discussed the latest developments today with Min jong un professor of the, at the Korea National Diplomatic Academy. Very warm welcome to you, Professor Min. It's lovely to see you. And, well, my first question, uh, North Korea, it fired eight missiles on Sunday morning into the East Sea from four locations. And, well, it's quite unusual to fire eight rounds all at once. And, of course, this also marks the regime's 18th provocation of the year. And it took place right after the three-day joint military exercise between South Korea and the United States. So, really, what do you make of this timing, um, the timing of North Korea's Sunday launch? Yes, yeah, so good morning and thank you for having me today. And uh, for your first question, um, as you mentioned, um, North Korea fired eight short-range ballistic missiles toward the East Sea on Sunday, and it was just one day after South Korea and U.S. added the joint drills near the Korean Peninsula involving a U.S. aircraft carrier. And uh, the, regarding the joint drills, it was the first time the, for the Allies, South Korea and U.S. to have mobilized a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier during their, their exercise since November 2017. And the North Korea has been highly sensitive to such a joint military exercise by the Allies, and it described it as a rehearsal for invasion to North Korea. So it seems that um, North Korea launched eight ballistic missiles in order to express its complaints and anger, possibly, about the Allies going back to the largest scale joint military exercise this time. In, ad in addition, I also think that by shooting several ballistic missiles at the different locations, uh, it seems that North Korea tried to show that its missile capabilities are superior to the Allies' defense posture. And Professor Min, well, some believe that the North's firing of eight missiles is to develop tactics to break through the Korean missile defense um, as launching two or more uh, missiles from the uh, as launching missiles from two or more origins at the same time, that would uh, severely weaken the chances of intercepting them. Do you agree with this kind of interpretation? And do you think this launch was directed at South Korea this time rather than the US? Well, I don't agree with the argument that the, the, the launching the, the missiles at the same time could the weaken the, the defensive posture of South Korea. Of course, theoretically, it is possible to assume that um, shooting missiles from several locations at the same time or the little bit different time gap uh, could increase the chance of breaking the missile defense system. But the, uh, generally speaking, South Korea's uh, military capabilities are far more superior or better than that of North Korea. And therefore, it would not be easy for North Korean missiles to fly over South Korean territory. It's mainly because they will be detected right after they are launched uh, from the, uh, the North Korean territory by the South Korean military uh, radar and they will be gone before crossing the uh, inter-Korean border. In addition, the missiles, the shooting sites and the facilities in North Korea will also be destroyed by South Korean missiles. And then the, I think North Korea should know that shooting missiles to South Korean territory is a clear signal that it began the serious military operation against South Korea. And therefore, it should be responsible for conducting such irrevocable military action on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, South Korea will definitely make sure that Pyongyang will pay for its decision. In addition, um, Kim Jong-un regime should keep, in, keep it in mind that the, the, the new South Korean government will never make uh, any compromise with Pyongyang, unlike the, uh, uh, its predecessor, like the uh, Moon Jae-in government. 
while North Korea continues to make reckless provocations. So I hope that North Korea will not waste time anymore and uh, just come back to the nuclear talks with the U.S. for its own people. And Professor Min, well, it seems that the North used short-range ballistic missiles and new tactical guided weapons, including the KN-23 and 24, as well as 25, which could be equipped with nuclear warheads. And, well, there's been all this talk about an imminent nuclear test at 7th, um, if it happens. And what kind of progress do you think it would have made by that point? Well, uh, I think that North Korea is ready to conduct another nuclear test. It means that the seventh uh, nuclear test will be able to take place at any time soon, according to Kim Jong Un's decisions, based on each domestic political considerations and its calculations about the relations with the U.S. and South Korea. And uh, um, regarding the upcoming nuclear test, uh, it seems that North Korea will make a technological advancements in nuclear capabilities specifically in order to put tactical nuclear warheads on the short-range ballistic missiles. And uh, enhancing its short-range ballistic missiles, missile capabilities mainly target its neighboring countries like South Korea and Japan, not the United States. So it shows that um, the main purpose of conducting another nuclear test is to enhancing nuclear North Korea's nuclear capabilities against South Korea and Japan. And uh, meanwhile, North Korea will also try to enhance its military capabilities against the United States through improving its ICBM capabilities. It means that there is a high probability that it will have another ICBM test after conducting the seventh nuclear test in order to increase its bargaining power on U.S before it attempts to resume the nuclear talks with Washington. And of course, President Yoon said on Monday that uh, the missile and nuclear threat from North Korea continues to grow day by day. And while South Korea and the U.S., they fired eight missiles in response to North Korea's provocation in the very early hours of Monday. And well, what do you make of this response? And how do you think North Korea is going to react? Well, as you mentioned, the two allies, South Korea and the U.S., fired eight ballistic missiles in, into the Eastern Sea in response to the most recent North Korea's missile provocations. And uh, the South Korean military announced that the Allies launched the ground-to-ground -ground Army tactical missile system, which is called ATACIMS missiles, from an eastern coastal region in Gangwon province. They're starting at 4.45 a.m., very early morning, around, the, the, for around 10 minutes. And the military said that um, the Allies shooting the missiles demonstrated the, the capability and posture to launch immediate precision strikes on the origins of provocations and their command and support forces. And it also shows that Pyongyang's military provocations will be met with corresponding reactions. Meanwhile, personally, I expect that North Korea will be silent about the Allies' response and uh, it will just go ahead to conduct another provocation following its own plan. And uh, considering that North Korea needed to conduct the nuclear test for the tactical nuclear warheads and shoot another ICBM for technological advancements, the Pyongyang will make another serious provocation in the coming weeks. So I expect that the secret administration on the Korean Peninsula will become more grave in the coming weeks and months. Now, well, with the security situation becoming more dire, as you said, um, not only towards uh, not only for South Korea but also neighboring Japan as well, how is uh, Seoul beefing up its missile defense and weapons capability against the North? And uh, going further than that, what is your recommendation? Well, the, it is known that the new South Korean government is trying to strengthen the extended deterrence and the combined defense posture of South Korea and U.S in response to North Korea's repeated provocations. Um, specifically, it is reported that recently, President Yoon suk yeol ordered the readiness posture be firmly maintained at all times, and the continued strengthening of the South Korea U.S. extended deterrence and combined defense posture, including missile defense exercises between South Korea and U.S.
So it is expected that South Korea will work more closely with the U.S. and their military cooperation will get strengthened in the coming months. So it is very likely that a large scale joint military exercises will come back uh, and the U.S. strategic assets will be more frequently deployed over the Korean Peninsula. So basically, uh, I, I think it's necessary for South Korean government to firmly respond to North Korea provo pro those Korean provocations. But I also think that South Korean government needed to have a diplomatic way to stably manage their security situation on the Korean Peninsula. It requires South Korea's facilitating role to resume the North Korea-U.S. nuclear talks and it also needs South Korea to play a major role in making progress for North Korea's denuclearization. So I hope personally that the South Korean government will be ready to play a major role in resuming the nuclear talks between the North Korea and U.S. because there is uh, also a possibility that North Korea might come back, might come back to the negotiating table toward the end of the end of this year after the uh, the uh, completing its uh, military build up in terms of the uh, repeated the military provocations and until then do you think perhaps pre uh, president joe biden in the us is going to be perhaps a little distracted with more domestic affairs especially with the um the key uh, elections coming up in november well, the, there is also a possibility that the U.S. will concede its uh, the domestic political situations. But uh, think about what factors could affect the, uh, the results of the upcoming midterm elections in the United States. Of course, the domestic matters like the economy, the, the unemployment rates, and other things, the economic the, the indicators, factors, could make the biggest impact on the results of the midterm elections. But, of course, the, the, the foreign policy issues like the, the, the how to deal with the Ukraine crisis and how to complete the, the nuclear talks with Iran and how to the effectively compete with the, the China in terms of the strategic competition and how to cope with the, the North Korea's nuclear threat on the United States. So if the, 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 the United States or the Biden administration will so succeed in the, the making progress, uh, the talking with North Korea in terms of the age of denuclearization. And uh, the American voters, U.S. voters, um, may buy that kind of the, the accomplishments when they go to the voting booth or in this upcoming the November election. So the, I think that the, the Biden administration will make its efforts to make the the so all kinds of accomplishments that they, they can do uh, uh, toward the, the end of this year to have the better the, the, the results uh, in terms of the, the, uh, the midterm election in this November. And how do you think uh, Joe Biden is really going to approach this North Korea uh, agenda, though, with him really pursuing foreign policy for the middle class? Do you think maybe South Korea and Japan will see a more significant advancement in their defense capabilities? Yeah, the, basically, I agree. I agree with your opinion that uh, the Biden administration will, the, the, will be focused on the, the enhancing or strengthening its tie with the uh, South Korea and Japan in terms of the, the increasing its uh, the, the military capabilities against the North Korea and the, for long term, the China. So the it's not easy to expect that the, the, the Biden administration will soon come back to the negotiating, negotiating table with, the, with the North Korea because, the, the, as I mentioned, the, the Biden administration is focused on the, the strengthening its tie with its key allies in East Asia, South Korea and Japan. So uh, it means that um, the, the Biden administration uh, will focus on the managing North Korean problems, North Korean nuclear threats, and uh, just to try to show the, uh, the, uh, the strengthening tie or the, uh, the uh, better the, the relationship with its the, uh, the key allies, South Korea and Japan. So it means that the, uh, the, it would not be easy to see uh, uh, the, the U.S. and the, the North Korea 
just the, the will come back to the negotiating table, table and talk about the, uh, the denuclearization process to achieve the, uh, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. But as I mentioned earlier today, uh, there is also a possibility that uh, North Korea uh, want to come back to the negotiating table, the negotiating table after achieving or the its military buildup or the after enhancing its bargaining power on U.S. I suppose the ball is in the North Court. And, well, lastly, well, we, we saw in the Biden Yoon um, joint declaration about the, men, well, we saw the mention of the possibility of placing strategic assets to the South Korean uh, to the Korean Peninsula. But uh, do you think we'll hear more talk about the possibility of uh, tactical weapons being placed here? Well, the, the, we need to see whether the, uh, the, the, the Biden administration will actually the, put the tactical the weapons on the Korean Peninsula because the, the many experts say that the, the, having the tactical weapons on the Korean Peninsula will not resolve the, the nuclear threats posed by North Korea. Uh, so far, the, the many experts agree that the putting just the, the tactical weapons and uh, the placing the strategic assets on the U.S. territory, ter territory like the Guam or Hawaii, uh, should it be enough uh, to show the, uh, the extended deterrence against North Korean the, uh, the nuclear threat? And uh, if the, uh, the, the South Korea decides and the allies decide to put the, uh, the uh, tactical weapons on the Korean Peninsula, you know, it will make the, uh, the secret situation on the Korean Peninsula uh, more grave, mainly in terms of the, uh, the, uh, the concerns by China and Russia, like the, 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 well, the power surrounding the Korean Peninsula. So if we consider those factors all together, you know, so, and we can see that the print, the, the technical reference on the Korean Peninsula uh, could have the, the many the, 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 so the, the advantages or so the good the benefits uh, than the, the not putting the, 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 those kind of the technical the, the weapons so the, the war has on the Korean Peninsula. So, of course, uh, the, there is, uh, still there is a possibility uh, to do that, but the personally, I think that the such kind of probability could be low in terms of the putting the attack weapons on the Korean Peninsula. We will see. Well, certainly nobody want, would want the situation to escalate in the region. And well, this is where we'll have to end the interview today. That was Min Dong, professor at the Korea National Diplomatic Academy. Thank you very much, professor, for your time today. Thank you.